Welcome back to another episode of Baby Daddies. As you can see, we are not alone this week. We are joined by my favorite woo-woo cast member. <laughs> we are joined by Aaron from For the Love of Dill Season 2. Aaron, how the hell are you? Welcome to the show. It's great to be here. I'm excited to be here. I'm doing pretty well. I'm in my sister's basement of her place right now because just having some family time. So can't complain. Things are going pretty good. Nice. Amario, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Um, my son, my cat, was acting a little crazy today. He was taking naps all over my keyboard, so I had to keep moving him and repositioning him. And then he just looked at me after I pet him, and then he just took a chunk out of my shoulder. I was like, why? Why the bites? But apparently that means he loves me. So. You have an orange cat, and every day you are surprised that you have an orange cat. That is the thing I will never <laughs> understand. <laughs> Every day it's something new. So who, who knows what tomorrow will bring? I don't know. Maybe you know, he'll run on the ceiling tomorrow. Honestly, you're cats you're are a quite learning creatures. and growing father. But <laughs> I told you this before you got the cat. That's an orange you cat. Did. Are you ready for you all this? It. <laughs> Speaking okay. of a lot going on, we have a lot. And when I tell you a lot of ground to cover, we got a lot. I thought, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I thought episode two was like jam packed. Episode three, this just is wild. But before we get into it, Aaron, I have to ask you about stormy's explosion at the end of episode oh, yeah. two uh, i just need to know what, what what were your feelings before she walked out and that did you know anything was going to happen like what what was going on with that like obviously when someone just quits competition like that i think and especially reality tv i think that is the worst thing to do because i'm just like you signed up for this so obviously she was pissed off and we didn't see her and then her coming out with that energy. You can tell Stormy right away when she walks in the room, if she's mad, you do not want her to be looking at you. You want her to be looking at the complete opposite direction of you because she will cut a bitch and she's terrifying, but the loveliest lady. But I was scared. Yeah, <laughs> she's got she's got a she got a strength about her. When she said put the fucking paintings down. Oh, one hundred percent. I was like stepmom energy. That's what yeah, it is. Stepmom so energy. In their place. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm glad. Like everyone on the other side, you could tell all the himbos were like, <gasps> yeah, I was like, how long are you on that? It's ain't my fault. This is their <laughs> night, not mine. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> well, complete opposite from that. She starts off this episode being the lovely, gorgeous, beautiful, and kind woman that we are all knowing. She starts off entering with a new himbo. Hazel walks out. He's 22. This boy is young. He's from Pennsylvania. A nice nose ring. Blondish, gingerish hair. Reddish, mm-hmm. uh, strawberry blonde, I believe is the correct term. I don't know. Stormy's vibing by the fountain yet again. Instead, of, <laughs> I will not get over yeah, this. Yeah, she'll always be there. <laughs> that fountain. I'm like, well, you got the whole bay in the back. There, yeah. you know, all this gorgeous scenery. She said, no, just no. put it by the fountain. The put fountain. It by the fountain. She likes the people driving by. Thoughts on Hazel? Uh, great. Uh, Hazel's a sweetheart. Um, such a sweetheart. Walked in. I was like, oh, it's a younger, gayer version of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Pokemon evolution. Like, uh oh, <laughs> this is gonna be an interesting day. Um, no, but seriously, like right off the bat, if we kind of notice, might see one of the clips. Well, like Hazel, like standing beside me, and we right away were like this, and we just so we have similar. Um, I've got a very Christian past as well. Like yeah. I was uh, supposed to be a, um, applying to Bible college to be a pastor at eighteen before I came out. So we had a lot of things to talk about in our own on our own time too. And uh, Hazel's just a sweetheart. Gotcha. I was actually wondering about that because you were talking about your, the spirituality kind of in like the first two episodes and mm-hmm. how you and Kane got along on that. So I was kind of wondering about your spirituality because yeah, so I consider I'm myself more, a little yeah. too. Yeah, I'm a big old hippie <laughs> now and stuff. I, and like I have my tarot cards. I do all that. My sister actually runs a full hey. astrology business, has an astrology podcast. Yeah, right <laughs> on that. Right on that level. That is me to a T, 150 percent. Um uh, it's kind of where I went the opposite of when I was Christian and Christianity and just kind of flipped a switch and went the more realistic right way. Yeah. You find a way to to still access the spiritual yeah. self without, without all like yeah, the, without all that the damnation. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like Hazel. He seems very soft spoken, uh, mm-hmm. which doesn't surprise me. He like said in his opening thing that he like gets nervous around pretty people, around people in general. And you can kind of tell like. It's just like a yeah, young kid. He's, he's like he got yeah. very like Bambi energy, you know? Yeah. Oh, one hundred percent. Little yeah, little deer running around. Yeah, it makes he's sense. Adorable. We move on to this little confrontation between you and Nick. 
Ooh, mama, it was heated. <laughs> she got heated. Yeah. The sweat uh-huh. was real. It wasn't just the it wasn't just the Florida heat that was all heated there. It was a <laughs> lot more than that. When he said that he was like, I just blew up. I just felt like I was being attacked. <laughs> <laughs> I literally wrote here in my notes. I was like, Nick is feeling very attacked right now. Very attacked. <laughs> yes. It, this I, is his Lagrange moment. <laughs> it's like a bitch. It's like, don't, I don't think I'm not going to be smart with my words. And I'll come at you how I'm supposed to. Don't mm-hmm. think that I'm an idiot just because of these things. I will say it how it is. And I will always say how I feel. And that's something that I'm like in my own day to day life. And something that I'm like there, you know, when I watched that scene and stuff, I was with some of my friends and all of them were like, oh, you're mad. Like, like you are not faking it. You are legit annoyed and pissed off right now. And I was like, yeah, I was. I'll always say it how it is. So that I got a lot of screen time in that one. <laughs> you know, but I appreciate that you stood your ground on this, especially when he was like, mm-hmm. my daddy, my daddy, my daddy. You're <laughs> like, you have known this man. He's not your daddy. We are here to experience things. I like that yeah. you're leaning into the experience almost more than I think anybody else. You're like oh, the yeah. most oh, readily no. available to meet other people, talk to other people, really try to play the field. That's what I thought we field. were doing. <laughs> yes. I thought that's what I signed up for. I signed uh-huh. up for a dating show where you're supposed to have the opportunity to meet other people. I didn't sign up for like a version of Love Is Blind. Like I said, Love at First Sight. How I said Ooh. in my confessional, it's like that's that's not what I signed up for, and I wouldn't have signed up for that. So that's yeah. why right off the bat, I was like, why am I getting the heat and why am I getting shit just because I'm doing what we're supposed to be doing? Mm-hmm. I think I think like, honestly, if there were more opportunities where like they didn't get to choose dates, I think if, if they had just you're with this person, you're with this person. Let's see what happens. Oh, I yeah. There's, that, there's more some opportunity people in the house that. I barely got to talk to. There's some people in the house, like even behind the scenes, like I did like. Some of the daddies have I never even I don't remember having one conversation with at first, you know, so it's like that shouldn't really be a thing. Like, I get it if you've got an amazing connection, like some people on the show. But like, if you don't and that and you're just like, this is just what we like I'm with. No, like, that's not that's not what we're here to do. Like, yeah. how dare you date on a dating show? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, why was how I like, shit? You, I was like, I'm sorry, in the real world, you're sleeping with someone every other day, half of you. So, like, <laughs> uh, ooh, clock that team. Let them know, like, Mario, that's to you, girl. <laughs> I know what West Hollywood is like. Miss Popular over here. Like, uh, <laughs> we, we saw the real. You said you got many boyfriends. <laughs> exactly. Like, uh uh-uh. uh. So, it's. It was very interesting to just have to deal with that. And it did get really heated. And like, those were real things that I laughed. The reason why I was laughing so much in that fight as well is it, they, you don't really notice it. But it, it's like when Nick goes and says, there's the door, bitch, or whatever. I literally, they don't have it on this team part there. But I said, I was like, we're outside. What door are you talking about? We're outside, you idiot. And then he walked off. So I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> I don't want to deal with dumb bitches. I love, I love the guys, truthfully do. But I was like, we're not having this fight. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I, so, and then he calls you a daddy hopper. Now Thank here's my question to you. Line. Are you <laughs> still like, a daddy hopper? And if so, do you wear it with a badge of honor? <laughs> uh, I do what I want to, and that's what matters. Um, no, I'm not a daddy hopper. I take someone on one damn date, honey. Like, I'm not a daddy hopper, but I will use the tagline and I will put it on a hat for sure. And that's going to come out eventually. As you should, like, yeah. if, <laughs> you guys, I like the tagline. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> if I can't buy a t shirt that has like a lily pad that oh, says daddy will. hopper <laughs> on it. Exactly. Don't worry. It's already in the works. Yeah, so. a little frog. <laughs> 100%. So good. Next, we move on. Daniel and Derek have a little talk. The twins mm-hmm. are are commiserating about their daddies. They are they're just so fucking funny. I love them. I love them to bits. Agree. But I love they're, that they're um they're talking about like how safe and warm they feel, you know. And and did, but then we get the whole Ed being against the twins, not the twins themselves, but about yeah. the idea of a twin. It just. Mm-hmm. did you have similar feelings being like oh my god there's two of them why are they doing this uh like a little bit but then like something you don't see i guess on screen as well too is like actually the twins are the two people that i'm closest was closest with in the house like yeah. we were like this yeah yeah like there's obviously scenes they didn't use they're all just positive stuff but about us that just wasn't there but like mm-hmm. i've been talking i was right off the get-go with daniel like this and then Derek came in and i was like that i called them my disciples like, like it was gay genius and the disciples and they called me their triplet like it I'm was screwed. i loved, loved them so no i think once i got to know both of them i was like oh no that's just how your relationship works and kind of how ed said as well that 
you know, it, everyone's every sibling's relationship is different. And it's like just because he wouldn't do this with none of them doesn't mean it's something that they won't do. Yeah. We just gotta get you a little silk press. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a little, a little part of the I know. The hair is growing, so <laughs> And then it also here, <laughs> he says the beginning stages of a relationship, but he cuts himself off and then yeah. goes, oh, yeah, oh, or something <laughs> that builds to it. And, you know, no. I, I agree with him because I'll, I'll, I think I've told, I've talked about this on my other podcast. Uh, before I started dating my boyfriend, we were like just hanging out for a good eight months. We were like, yeah. oh, dating? What's that? And then all of a sudden, yeah. oh, oh, we're together. <laughs> so, no, we're yes, together. I didn't realize that. Something that builds to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very natural growth, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Hazel walks in, meets the other himbos, and Nick is immediately on the defensive. Like, mama, she's threatened. Mm-hmm. There is blood in the water. Which I don't understand. Because, because that's what he's used to. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. Maybe this is like trauma from West Hollywood. <laughs> it's just, it's West we Hollywood trauma. trauma, sweetheart. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm coming at he it had very a Chicago. Home and was like, I left for a reason. So. I, in my head, I'm like, okay. So what if he's got more abs? This is a twink, Mama. You got a little beef to you, like, yeah. like live it up. Like, I, I exactly. just didn't see it. But yeah, it's yeah, because he th- he's scared he gets aged out. <laughs> you're right. How <laughs> oh, we call himself thirty at this twenty nine thirty? So he's uh-huh. like, oh no, the younger version of what I used to be. Twink Ooh. death is imminent. <laughs> hey, when the new supreme rises, yeah, uh, <laughs> the other one the falls. <laughs> Hazel walks in. Sal's like, oh, this is my type. Like, young, dumb, full of cum. Like, this is this is what I came on the show for. <laughs> and then Hazel says, hi, I was from a religious cult. And then yeah. immediately I was like, wait, hold up. Were you in Mary's church in Real Housewives of Salt Lake City? Yeah, like, exactly. That- what type of religious cult were you in? Because how did this happen? That's what I, my first thought. Well, he said, he said Pennsylvania. So I thought Amish because that's where the Amish yeah. are. Oh, but then I I figured it was either something like that or Pentecostal or some Mennonite somewhere yeah, in that. I think it's something in there. Yeah, because yeah. I went to school in Philadelphia and we had a couple like ex religious people from out there in PA and yeah, they got trauma. So, yeah, you got trauma. Trust me, I have an ex religious kid and it's a lot of trauma in there. It ain't cute. So deal with it in different ways you need to. Mm-hmm. So then Hazel says he wants to bring Ed on his date and then immediately Derek was just like, oh, my man, excuse you? My man, Daniel's heated. <laughs> Daniel's not, yeah. And I was a little nervous for Daniel as well, just because, like, I want to make sure they're okay, too, and stuff. And he was just like, you know what? And Daniel said, too, he's like, I just got to trust that what I do, what I have with him is going to work its way out. But, like, he said, that's the point of the game as well. He's That's what we talked about after. He was like, even he wants to take him on a date, sure. And if it clicks, then, okay, we'll go from there. Mm-hmm. You just gotta like, roll with the punches. Yeah, he had a better reaction than Nick did to those type of situations. So. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. And because the whole time I was thinking that, because I was like, I wonder why Nick didn't respond. I think it's because you weren't new to the house. I think that's probably yeah, why. Yeah, that's right? why. That's yeah. From the day one, he was like, "But well, we were buddies day one." I was like, I, t- t- "It's been a few days, baby. Like, come on." And like, we're just playing the game. Yeah, we're trying to do this thing. We're trying to meet people. Lots of people in here to talk to. Lots of people to meet. You know. Mm-hmm. Daniel's talking about Wonder Twin powers activate him and Derek are going to like connect hands and shoot a beam oh, yeah. at Hazel. hundred <laughs> percent. And then we go on to the Hazel and Dr. Ed date. I have written here was Hazel Amish or Pentecostal. That's where I wrote it. Um, do we get some more fleshed out stuff from Dr. Ed? Finally, something that isn't a red flag. He talks about his mother. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I don't last know anyone episode, who would say, yeah, Hey, I'm controlling. I was like, what? I was shocked because he's so pretty. He is so pretty. He's got those gorgeous teeth. You know, he seems very nice. (laughs) But then last episode, I kept wanting to root for him and they kept giving me red flags. But I don't know. It's like, dude, I don't know. Yeah, you we got, got a, a lot red, more. You're driving a red road at this point. Exactly. The red flag, the red light. We got a lot more, um, you know, personality from him here. You, mm-hmm. know, you can see how much he like is honoring his mother through his doctor. He's the reason that he does everything that he's doing. Um, and then Hazel talks about his family life and the trauma of being forced to come out, which is, of course, terrifying. And I hope no one ever has to go through it. Because um, if you have, you know. You know the pain. It's yeah, it's rough. Been there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can see how hurt he is. He's talking about mm-hmm. you know he had to kick out of the house, had to move with an ex, et cetera, et cetera. But then Ed lays down the ground rules. He said, "Listen, there's someone I'm talking to in the house. I'm kind mm-hmm. of feeling them. You were really nice. It's nice to meet you. You know, but best of luck." Mm-hmm. Which 
good. You know, this is what I wanted because as you, you know, <laughs> I'm Derek and Daniel Stan over here. So I did not want to exactly, see agree. either of the boys in trouble. Nope. So yeah, this, um, this was good. Totally agree. Now we move on to one of the favorite games that we've had this season so far, at least personally, the booty game. Oh my God. Okay. My mother had to watch that. Oh, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> think about that. Hey, oh my God. What did she think? Well, I was wearing a I was wearing a vest that she made. So I was like, <laughs> guess what, mom? I came back from reality TV and I wore one of the clothing pieces you made and showed my bare ass. So sorry. No. Amen. <laughs> and I wish more people showed bare ass. I know. We need I was more clear. bare ass in the world. I was like, come on, people. Yeah. And not just so bare then, ass. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Boom. <laughs> I'll do it. So Stormy talks about um, the big old hole in her ass. And I was like, you know what, Stormy? We've all been gaped before. It's just mm. a part of life, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she says she's going to gape Dr. Then, Dilf right back. Yeah, she did. She was pissed. She's like, what the she hell is this? for revenge, as Dr. Mm-hmm. Dilf said. I had to write oh. that down because that was so good. That was a 100%. Good line. Jimmy talked about his sunburn his ass and how it came out ass. one time. Lily white, and, yeah. You're blinded if you see that. It's so funny because in the confessionals, you can see he's sunburned. So as yeah. he's talking, like you know he's not bullshitting. Like, <laughs> oh, no, he he's is not, not bullshitting. Lying. He did not go outside. <laughs> Poor man. Stayed inside at all times. So Keith comes out first. And honestly, I wrote Keith's got that bubble. Bitch, I thought like, he was about to spread was... hole. I was scared. Yeah, I thought I so. Was ready no, for he it. forgot when he bent over, he forgot and he was like, crap. I forgot I forgot that like the angle, like my booty hole might be out. I was like, Yeah, your booty hole definitely out there somewhere. It was close. I because that was... angle really I was like, Oh my god. I mean, great, mm-hmm. great ass. Perfect mm-hmm. ass, you Absolutely know, but great ass. Yeah, I was scared, I here. scared for her a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I said Nick, Nick had a cute butt. Um, I never noticed the bee on the back of his neck. Whenever no. a storm was going over, like the tattoo things, you have to guess yeah. like things on other people's body. I was like, I never seen the back of this man's neck. I've oh. only seen titties. Like, yeah, just boobs, just boobs on the sides of heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he just melons. got big ass titties. He works really hard for them. Good. Yes, he, does. he works he very hard. He's working out all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I have written here. I love these little like this little spy cam thing that they're doing where they're yeah, like cutting the- in and zooming in. It's cute. It's very silly. I love the editing on here. Yes, Daniel had a very smooth ass. And then Obviously. the left key tattoo. Oh, so gorgeous. And Aaron, I was like, Aaron got that jiggle, mama. It's that <laughs> thing they was talking ass. about. <laughs> I got skater booty. Sorry about it. Part of my sport. <laughs> we loved it. I, I could not get enough of it. Derek, I wrote, yes. And then... Anthony was just like, oh, yeah, like, you know, his ass tastes good. I mean, yeah. it's good. And the producer was like, wait, what was that? Tell us again. The Derek and I are spending good. a lot of great time great together. Time together. <laughs> it's like yeah. my favorite line from this episode. Oh, yeah. I have a whole video of them. Make, I have a video of them when we were, when we were doing a pause of filming. And it's literally the, both the twins with their guys, like, basically making out like in the kitchen. I'm like, guys, we're all still here. Like, like the cameras are still rolling. Like, like cameras are still rolling. You're just in the corner. Like <laughs> good, for good for them. Get it on, girls. Yeah, I was on for it. <laughs> Rico got some Rico cute on little panties. Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's, the, that's the note I have for mm-hmm. right there. Like, can panties. you see right now? Like <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, and that gimp kini. mask. Well, yeah, the face oh, kini. Oh, you were sweating so much. With... <laughs> it was hot out there. I was like, you, you can barely breathe. Like, I remember that was a smart choice. Yeah, I mean, it looked cool, but yeah, yeah. definitely not the, the right mm-hmm. choice for, for Florida Heat. Oh, hell no. No. So Nigel missed the question about Rico and the nipple piercing, but he was like, you know what? I'm here for his heart. Okay, that's what matters. And I was yeah. like, you know what? You We're know, here just... on a dating show today. We're going to find the, mi- the Miss America of the season yeah, because the way she twisted that. <laughs> she is Miss America. She's Miss <laughs> reality. <laughs> She was like, oh, you know, a little stumble. I got it. I got it. You know, yeah. who's looking at nipples? Exactly. I'm looking at souls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love. So then we switch from the himbos to the daddies. And Jimmy comes out first. Um, he said his pale white ass was on display. And I was like, oh, my God. Um, he's almost got the question on the bluish green eyes. Yeah, I was almost. Like, I, I, I would have just blue? given it was to him. Green? I don't know. I was like, I don't I know. I would have given it. Yeah, I would have given it too, honestly. 
And then Nigel comes out and then Rico was like, you know, sometimes his eyes change color in the sun. Like, you know, when he's upset or when he's happy. And I was like, oh my God, brown eye realness. They always change colors, of course. Oh, yeah. And then Anthony, I wrote that he needed some help undressing, which I I gladly would have gotten up there. Like, 100%. I would have ran to the front, knocked somebody over. I got him! I got him! Uh, I I would have, too, so. (laughs) Kane comes out next. And before Stormy even finishes the question, Nick is already, like, Libra. It's a Libra. 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 And I was just like, oh, Boom, 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 boom. That's like someone's trying to prove themselves. Uh Uh-huh. Oof. She's like, <laughs> recovering from that mortgage question. Yeah, seriously. That was embarrassing. Uh, well, also, Kane, and, like, is... Was he too short to reach the hole? Yeah. yeah that's what I so. thought. Okay. That's what I thought, because I'm like, he, the hole's, like, here, and his he butt's, like, on only in the bottom. Toes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, production, get him a box or something to stand on. Yeah, y- y'all don't cool. got apple boxes? I know y'all got apple boxes yeah, on set. Come fine. on now. <laughs> I was almost in a middle split, so. <laughs> right. The exa- yeah, I guess that's that's kind of a hard hole to make because you got to make it tall yeah, enough for you, short enough for Kane. But then Sal comes out and then you automatically know you're like, the beard is this color, yeah, the mustache is the other too. color. And I was just like, see, this is what I'm talking about. You gave the answer and then gave a little more. This is what yeah, we want to exactly. see from the himbos. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And but no and other bitches were like up. that. No other bitches were like that, so... <laughs> they were too busy looking at souls. <laughs> bullshit. Souls, tell me where they're from. I dare you. You don't know. <laughs> and Ed comes to finish up. I didn't even know he had a totem pole tattoo on his leg. I don't even think mm. I've ever seen this man's legs. I just can't stop looking at his face, honestly. I know, yeah. he's so pretty. He's got, so that, pretty. he's got that Colgate smile. That he does. Mm. I'm like, these teeth... Yeah. Sponsored, babe. Beautiful man. So then the himbos end up winning. Woo. Yes. yes That's what we needed and deserved. Oh, yes. We needed that very hard. So I was happy. I was, I was like happy with then how to see how it would go with people picking each other. So yeah. Glad that got spun up a little bit. I'm I'm glad too. Ooh. But it like even with, with it getting spun up, people were still like, all right, well. No, right from the start, like right after it got spun up, I was like, oh, maybe it'll be like what I'm trying to say. And everyone right away was like, no, we're just treating this as friends. Like they talk about it backstage. They're like, oh, no, we're just going to be like friends at the end. I'm like, that's not the point. Yeah. <sighs> this is mm-hmm. not the point. Like, the why are you connection. in all your dates talking about the other guy that they're with? Why don't, why was everyone talking about me last episode? Like, why was Nick and Sal talking about me last episode? Like, talk about each other, figure out your own shit. Like, yeah. try to connect that way. But no. Which we we talked about in the recap because we were, I my mm-hmm. exact thing, I was like, this is an opportunity for you to meet somebody and like have a conversation and try mm-hmm. to explore a connection. Why not take it? Spend the entire time talking about how you feel like you got dumped or you feel like uh, you just, the, uh, the entire time talking it's, about you. Which great, like, you know, we love talking about you. We but, got, I love, <laughs> hey, I love it. I guess I was the entertaining one, so not my fault. <laughs> so people are choosing dates. Aaron, you choose Sal. Sal is a little odd. He's feeling Hazel a little bit. And then Nick has a little uh, Freudian slip between the names. Do you think that oh, was a joke God. gone wrong? Or do you think he oh, was really no, just... Oh, no, it was hilarious. <laughs> it was him fully missing it. I'm hysterically laughing. Ooh. <laughs> I was like, ha! It's exactly what I was talking about. You don't even know where he's from. Mm-hmm, just <laughs> lapping it up, lapping just, it up. I was up. like, this is a via the twist. We're holding it in, trying not to hysterically laugh. I was like, you're dumb. That dumb. was a good one. That made me laugh. And then Hazel... <laughs> Hazel cannot get off my twin's necks. I swear to God. I know. He goes from one of their daddies straight to the other one. one. I cannot believe this. But also at the same time, like, I'm not worried about them. I know. I'm like, you can tell the connection that they have are are fine. It's real. I'm thinking this shakes everyone up. But then Keese is like, all right, well, Rico, you know, you can just have time with Nigel. It's fine. And then everyone else just chooses someone. It's not the point. Like, yeah, (sighs) which I understand Keese being like, I like understand Keith and Angel. Yes, because mm-hmm. they have like what they I They have a consider, very good connection right off the bat. They do. Connection. It's very genuine. Yeah, but I think everyone else could have been like, well, this is an opportunity to talk to someone. Yeah. Let's talk to no, someone. But no one but, else is. But yeah, and now we have Sal running up to Hazel, running up that mm-hmm. hill. So Sal runs up to Hazel, who is just taking the most gorgeous selfies. 
And there was immediate. So I was just like, I'm flirting. I'm coming in hard. Oh, yeah. I'm coming in strong. This is like I said earlier, this is how I like him. Young, dumb, and full of cum. And Hazel was just like, oh, me, of course. Like, yeah, take me, daddy. And I really enjoyed the conversation, everything that they had. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I, Sal did bring up that blondes ruined his life, and I was like, you know what? What haven't blondes ruined? But I'm movie? like, he still looks He's ginger. Still kind of ginger, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's what I was like. <laughs> but oh well, alas. I think that you know their connection seemed fine. It seems good. It's yeah. definitely a different connection, you know. Like I think when you when you two had your date, it was definitely not a battle for dominance, but you were both definitely being we are very di- we're very similar energies and that's why like yes I don't, and as well like i don't know if we're like the most romantic thing of that connection or whatever but in all honesty and Thal and i talked about this a lot compared to talking to almost anywhere else in the group there we both kind of said to each other outside of this house we would actually probably keep talking yeah so when you're looking mm-hmm. at it as an actual thing of like oh who would you actually connect with outside of this house in that sense like that's why we were kind of together mm, because we're like, we sense. actually like talked backstage all the time. Cause we have similar views on life. We do similar types of things. Like we actually have genuine real conversations, maybe just more as friendship, but like, yeah. So it like their connection is different and he's cute. He's adorable. So, yeah. Baseball, of course. But that was, I have written here. My one worry was that their connection might be a little too much. One side is, is it going to be giving, the well, considering where it's like, like Hazel could have had two options to pick dates and he never picked Sal once. Uh, yeah, I'm like, oh. well, I'm, my first thought was, you know, <laughs> daddy comes home, speaks, and, and, and Hazel is just sitting there while, you know, yeah. <laughs> do it they have as much to talk he's about? He's chilling in his spare house. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I that wrote here my in my notes, it was like the tweet, like, the what's global warming, daddy? And then don't worry, kitten. Like, that's, yeah, what, I wrote yeah, exactly. that's what I'm trying Just to get like at. That. Exactly. It is. Like, sure. Yeah, whatever. Sorry, <laughs> what's your name again? <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, I kind of like that you and Sal, you seemed like you challenged each other a bit on topics. Yeah. So you like had a yeah. bit more to talk about. Whereas this one is like, hey, daddy. Hi, daddy. Hi, daddy. Like, you know, I get up two parts of the conversation. I'm going to laugh and sit here and not respond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we move on to some of these dates. If you could really call them that. It was, I don't, that was so uncomfortable. It was a little kiki with my girls. It was, it was a date. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was like, it was cute. Sunset was nice. Like those dates were question. really awkward. Like <laughs> these dates where everybody is at tables in the same space. Oh, <laughs> you can hear everything. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so some bitches, that's like last week at the painting thing. Like you can hear everything. And I was like, can you all just shut up about me? Like uh, here, I'm here for my screen time as well. Honey, this is great. Love it. If you're oh going to do that anyways, may as well do it. But God yeah. damn, pick a new topic. Especially because you like <laughs> towered over the easel and you're like oh, right I next see. to I them. Know. I literally was looking Nick in the eyes. That's so funny. Oh. So Derek and Jimmy, <laughs> Derek uh, is grilling him on keys a little bit, kind of doing the, the the friend thing of what are your intentions with my mm-hmm. daughter? <laughs> like, don't hurt oh, my yeah. friend. Mm-hmm. Are y'all fucking, where are y'all fucking at 1 a.m.? <laughs> Exactly. Which, were y'all surprised when you heard this, or do you? Did you, did you uh, know I found out earlier in the day about that, and I was like, "Whoa, one, where the hell do you have the time to do that?" Uh, <laughs> oh. With how busy we are, and um, I'm like all to it, all for you. I just didn't even know you have to be really sneaky. You have to be very sneaky to be able to do that. That's what I assumed. I'm like, like my first thought was, should he even be saying that? Like, does he? The, are the producers gonna get yeah, mad at him? Yeah, that? no, it was. They it was like very. Like, I was very surprised. We were all like, where? Literally, when did you have the time to do that? Like these beds, like you get up, you make one move, and they're like, Ow! like they squeak so much. Like, <gasps> oh my god, yeah. squeaky beds in Dolph Mansion. Oh my god, squeaky beds in Dolph Mansion. Girl, they're probably <laughs> fucking on that elevator. It's that damn elevator. They just uh-huh, like, that damn elevator. elevator. <laughs> like, bitch, I don't want to get stuck in that. That's old. Yeah, no, I've, I've I've worked I've worked in productions before. I know how busy it gets. I, that is dedication to being like, yeah, we're, we're gonna do something. I was like, bitch, I was mm-hmm. eating McDonald's at the end of the night with Nick half the time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, like, bitch, I'm tired. I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> Literally, like we get Hazel and Anthony. Listen. But um, I told you, I fully thought this man's daughter was between the ages of eight and thirteen. No, his I was, is you're old. not the only one. <laughs> Daughter's older than. Um, there. <laughs> I, don't know I was why. like, what? Oh, yeah, I know. He's a daddy. Yeah, he's like, 
He's a father. father. He's, he's a, a father. father. Yeah. He's a father. He's a His father. daughter could be a mommy. Like, <laughs> yeah, for real. He could, could be a be granddad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he could be a granddad it's in the next two years. Yeah, that shocked me. I was like, oh my God. So his daughter's older than Hazel. So I just, I just know Anthony's like, like immediate. Cur- no, he's curling like, he's out. Just, yeah, he's like, <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. But once again, I like that he stands his ground between, uh, between him and his means, which is yeah. cute. Um, now we have you mm-hmm. and Sal. Would you like to? Would you like to head the conversation about your date with Sal? <laughs> uh, like, it was fun. <laughs> I want to spark up the conversation because, like, people I think often don't think like I'm a pretty like I'm a pretty lovey dovey person and hopeless romantic in some ways, but I have my freaky side and I do my things and that's fine. And I wanted to talk about those things because I know that's something that Sal was into as well in some ways. So I think it was just sparking up the conversation on what that can necessarily look like if we were, were to do something like that together. Like, who knows? But I think that's kind of also when you've done like two, three, de- like a few dates with someone and you get a little closer, I think that's a pretty normal conversation to have of mm-hmm. like, especially in the gay community and the gay world with it being yeah. more normalized in that sense. Like, I think that's kind of at the point in time where it's normal to have it. So that's why I asked those questions and it was fine. Like, I, wanted, <laughs> I wanted to hear a little more about like, open like because i i feel like in the way that they showed us it was like you brought it up we got a little bit and then he starts talking about how traditional he is then it was i was like no i want to hear more about the yeah yeah, when it it, it said he's all traditional i'm like yes and no like i like i also know sal he's not fully traditional that way but he is i guess it's because he has been in longer committed relationships like you mentioned episode one and stuff but i think it's something that sal and i actually like agree on in other ways and like i think there's a beauty behind exploring yourself in different ways and especially not rushing into again not rushing into everything rushing into a huge relationship you know like have that time when you can just be close friends with someone and explore the things and then when you're ready to fully commit you fully commit exactly. why is everyone coming so fast exactly shop the field a bit play the exactly field. see Get what you like what you don't mm-hmm. like figure it out with both of you uh-huh nothing wrong with that you also say who doesn't like a hot dog in their mouth that's another one of the lines because <laughs> yes. i always want yes. to write a couple uh-huh. favorite lines from that episode. Yeah, that's I another like good that. yeah, the hot dogs actually good sl- were they good and how was this barbecue oh, real tea cool. yeah that's what i thought <laughs> they were cold it as was fuck <laughs> No yeah. bitch is eating that. Do you see Kane playing around with the food on his date? <laughs> like he's picking it up and putting it down. One of my favorite things to do when you watch people when they're filming shit on reality TV or even other television, it's like everyone just keeps moving the food. Yeah, or, I think or one painting, person, or painting yeah, I think it was Nick or someone ate it or something. We were really? Like, what are you doing? Yeah, it was someone. I was like, leave it to me. One hungry bitch. There's no sauce on this mm-hmm. shit. It's cold. <laughs> dry, Damn. cold. The dry hot dog. ass kind of burnt hot dog. Yeah. Ed probably made it. Honestly, one of the other things I have written down here. <laughs> At least he didn't burn another house down. You know that because <laughs> when I rewatched that. And I, I fully he could have not digested a crack that. Egg. I was like, wait, what? He burnt the house down over cracking an egg. And I feel like I didn't really talk yeah. about it that much last episode because I, I feel <laughs> like I should have. Like, you are not a daddy unless you can at least crack an egg open and cook it, bitch. <laughs> I am of the belief that every single person on this planet should be at the very bare minimum know how to cook an egg. Oh, you know, you tell her, cook an egg, at least boil some pasta and make toast. Come on. Like, exactly. Something. Super easy things. Bare, but nope. <sighs> Bare minimum. Bare minimum. But one of the things I want to touch on here was you talk about being more dominant mm-hmm. and wanting to explore. Yeah. Um, being, you know, being swaddled a bit, being a little more submissive and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, have you had the chance to do that since filming? What are your experiences coming from someone who is so dominant? Uh, you know, uh, on screen <laughs> still haven't had the experience uh, <laughs> it's like no it's like it's i'm a six foot four i'm a big guy i am a more dominant person in general like that is way more my side but like i just don't get the opportunity or option to do that and i think that's kind of what i'm also looking for in a guy is like someone that is not afraid to show that side with me too no matter what your height is and just be able to have like kind of i don't have to be the daddy in that sense and that's mm-hmm. kind of what i always have to end up feeling like so it is something I still want to explore, and I probably still will it eventually, maybe after this. But as of now, he's still there. <laughs> you hear that, listeners? Yeah, if I hear you that. If you want, want that, to make Aaron feel like here. he is 5'2", 
You want to make Aaron like feel like a Mario? Kind of right away, <laughs> oh, <but. laughs> if you want to turn the Aaron into a Mario, thing. hit yeah, him up. Like, yeah, <laughs> just smallest shot in the head or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that one. With Nick and Kane, I thought I'm going to be thinking about Kane like moving a hot dog on his plate the entire time I'm talking about it now. <laughs> so Kane kind of <laughs> charged him up like a third of the way into the date, like, you know, so I know this is like your wee ho thing. Are you here for that? Or are you here for love? And I was just like, oh, um, I know you heard that since you said you can hear yeah. all the dates. And I was just like, I hope you're like clapping in the corner. Like, yes. Oh, I ass, was. Girl. I was like, like, good. I hope he asked this question. Cause I, that was another thing. I really liked Gain a lot. And like, mm-hmm. we actually are very similar in a lot of the ways. And I know even from production side too, like they thought we would talk more, like just get it based off of like what we do and stuff. And he just was very uh, goo goo eyes over Nick, and he's, kind he's of, very submissive. I think. Yeah, you know? he's cl- mm-hmm. would have worked with me, but he's been like, oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> but very. I think it was just clouded by like the whole idea of, and I don't know. I'm happy he asked the question, but still, I don't really know what that answer is. Yeah, I wanted mm-hmm. to hear a little bit more about that, but I also think this is probably some of the more. Uh, endearing stuff that we've gotten from Nick because I yeah, feel like I the, think so. th- this definitely made me Absolutely. like him a lot more because from oh, the yeah, first two episodes yeah I got a little more from him so I'm definitely I'm, I'm coming around on him we're getting a little less of the the, the WeHo thing exactly you know? <laughs> a little less of his WeHo character and that's more like himself and you know like that's why I, I said it I think in episode two or something when we were talking I was like I'm confused why you start acting different when we're filming in that sense like and that's what I got and I mentioned it, it was like you just like you switch a flip in some ways. And I was like, this doesn't make sense. Cause I think you're really cool. Nick is one of Nick's my closest friend of that. Since there we yeah. talk a few, every few days. Like I've went, I've visited him like three times this past since then. Like we're, we're close and stuff. So it's just, I, that's why I think I challenged him. Yeah. As you should. Uh, I was like, so I was happy mm-hmm. to see a bit more of his actual self come out in this episode. Yeah. And I think people sometimes don't even realize that they're putting on for the camera. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. You don't realize you just like, and that's why so that's what my, one of my cool goals was. And I think it's worked in my favor because I have been like PR trained and been doing interviews and stuff for so many years of my life because of my job. And I was able to still, re- and one of your goals, you really still have to be yourself. So I think I was able to do that pretty well because it's reality TV. Come on. We're put on a camera. Everything's going to be an extra extroverted, extroverted version of it. Like it's going yeah. to, you're going to be a little bit more, confident a little bit more spicy but you're still trying to be yourself but i think sometimes people get lost in that and then they go and start acting like they need to be a certain way when it's uh-huh. like you don't really. and if yeah. you're just boring then you're just boring. yeah listen we'll take this knowledge okay i'm auditing this class right now just yeah. so you know <laughs> listen, listen when when the when you get on season five of mario we <laughs> can exactly. keep these things in mind girl ready <laughs> <laughs> writing it down uh-huh. oh yeah baby write that but, down after this date, we go to Ed and Daniel, and then Daniel says, um, I've kind of fallen for you a little bit. And uh-huh. I was like, oh, oh, you said that on camera? He like, did. Like, no. also, Ed, Ed is also like a serial monogamous, so I was this is, did yeah. not surprise me. No, not at all. And they were like so cute, and just I, I love Daniel so much with my heart. Ed is a sweetheart, too, so... It was nice, like, that they got the chance to have this kind of date and have that kind of shown in front of the camera, too, because they were really close behind the scenes all the time. And that was, like, very authentic, so. Yeah, you could tell just, like, the way that they smile at each other. I'm like, oh, they like they, they like each yeah, other. They're, they're, they're cool like with each, each other. other. They're cute. Yeah, it was adorable. Mm-hmm. And then we get this two-way, three-way kind of situation. Mm-hmm. I succeed, well, you know, I, I, I released the rest of my time. It's very Congress. <laughs> Where Keese is like, y'all can just have this. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, well, it's just, especially with Rico and Nigel, like, from the get-go, they really uh, just click. And they're mm-hmm. each other's physical, I think, type, too. And I think that's a huge part, as well. Yeah. Is like, that's the type of person that they would necessarily want to go for. So it's like, you can tell just right off the get-go in episode one. So I would have been the same, honestly. I probably would have offered up my time, if same vice versa, if I was with Nigel, just because I'm like, I know how much they really want to spend that time together. Yeah, and they were very verbal about it to all of us. So. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. they look very out of yeah, any they other actually couples. Know, they actually know where each other lives, and like probably know their last names. Work. <laughs> <for them>. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Nick's last name isn't Mask. That's right. not me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> um, so what do you, what'd you think about the state of Mario? 
I really liked it. It was just every time Rico and Nigel are on screen, it just it makes I me know. so happy. Like I really just they're gonna succeed. I yeah, I see it. They're cute. They're, they're super very, cute. Very Prince Charming, you know, they're just so fairy tale about each other. The it's way they smile and romance. talking about each other, I'm like it's adorable. It was, it was very that. Uh-huh. But I mean, I was also feeling the way that Rico had to perform because Emphasis he was the last himbo chosen. <laughs> Emphasis and the way he just ass. snatched Nigel's chair and just like the skirt on the ground, I was just like, "Oh my god!" Like, uh-huh. I was Rico's a great my performer. Chair. Yeah, he mm. ate that. He ate that. He is a great performer. We were all very impressed. I love the guy. Yeah, I love Gogo performances. It's great. Oh, yeah, loved it. Nigel was so supportive too. So it was quite beautiful. I loved it every minute. Love that, and that ass was moving. That ass was, was jiggling a lot. It was <laughs> like moving. Jiggle the mic pack. Yeah, was that going the crazy. mic pack. <laughs> yeah, literally. I <laughs> <laughs> get to cancel that audio. <laughs> oh, and now we uh, probably, <sighs> you know, I, I hate to say my favorite, but maybe my favorite elimination <laughs> out of these two seasons. <laughs> oh, it's mine too. Trust me. <laughs> it's great. You really you. I love it. You really went for it, which is great. Mm-hmm. Also, Stormy, let's talk about her dress real quick. Ooh, this magenta I gown say, she has on. Uh, she looks pretty. It. She looks good in blue. I think blue is her color. Blue is her color. But this red, the it eye makeup hot. on it, she looked good. Ooh. And it was a long dress. She mm-hmm. she looked good. I like the long dress on her. Yeah, the long dress is really nice. I was like, oh, a gown moment. This is nice. Yeah, we like that. Yeah. Um, Daddy's choice. Is this. When, what were your thoughts when you heard that it was daddy's choice? I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, this is a setup. I know I set up when I see one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was, Eddie. I talked about it. Like, I heard things from said people and I didn't like what it was. So, right away, when we were rushing to the elimination, I had no time to talk to anyone about it. And I was like, what is this? Like, I was honest with you guys from the start. Why aren't you going to be honest with me? Like, it just at least warn me if this is how it's going to go. Like, yeah. especially just when you get really emotional about like in conversations in your confessionals and you just expect that honesty. But obviously there was things that were twisted by certain people. And it's just like, that's how it's been panned out. And I love and respect every one of the producers. I think they're fucking awesome. They're amazing. They're so great to work with. But it was... I. Things get caught up in reality TV. Yeah. It gets caught up. And mm-hmm. sometimes when storylines, I was giving a great storyline. It's true. You can see it in episode one to three. I'm featured a lot in it. And yeah. you, I you're kind of like a, the voice of the show for a lot of yeah, this. Which, yes. I, which I loved. And I want to be that way on future reality shows because that's my authentic self. I'll always call it out how it is. But then when I go and don't get picked in this sense, and I know certain things that other people had said to me on the date and stuff. I was like, "Uh uh-uh, this is not cool. I'm not going to let you embarrass me again. And just because, and it was stereotypical. It was the choice of, okay, are you going to pick the one that you actually have a good conversation with in these things? Are you picking the next pretty gay thing? Yeah. Like like, like we said earlier, the one that you can actually talk to about things. Yeah. And I thought that we were here for connections. I didn't think that we were here for the next pretty thing. Yeah. For those of you that aren't super caught up or familiar with the way reality TV works, storyline producers and people that work on storylines are the ones that are really crafting how things are going to go here, nudging people towards certain things. It's less so forcing them to choose things mm-hmm. and being like, well, why don't you go talk to them about this? Why don't it's you like go if they're talk talking to your best friend for advice? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of like what I do at poison touch. My other <laughs> podcast, go check it out at poison. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, RuPaul, Come on, I, you. I will find the time to promote the other pod. Always. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it, it was a pretty iconic time. And like that, I literally had a thought in my head right before, like, obviously, as the people are going down the line and you're just like, and I was with Hazel and Hazel because Hazel was like, I don't want you to leave because you're the only person I talk to here. No. I mean, that's why he's holding on to me because he's like, I would rather go than you. Like, I don't want to be here all alone. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Poor baby. <laughs> yeah, he like came over and worked to me like a big brother. And he was just like, I don't want to leave. I don't want to do this without you. Like, I was leaving. He was like, fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. My heart. That makes it even worse. Yeah, I that's know. why he was all over me. He was like, fuck, I don't want you to go. You're only friends. Friend. wow that's <laughs> wild i just i loved how you really were like i'm gonna speak on it i'm not gonna shy away from my feelings i'm gonna we're gonna let everyone know and i'm gonna say what i feel like this this is what you you really wear your heart on your on your sleeve yeah. right here. And I, I loved that mm-hmm. that was great 
I, I 100% do. I like that's how I live my life every day. And I'm not going to not do it just because cameras are on. If not, I'm going to do that more of it because I think that um, if you hear I'm some point that it's like if I hear my name being talked about or something, I don't just go and gossip on the people's back. I go to the person and be like, what are you saying? This is not true. Tell me. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about I'm that. very like, let's be honest. So luckily with reality TV, it makes really good TV. And oh, nice. I had a choice <laughs> in my head that I was like, I'm like shaking and I'm like, am I going to say this? Am I going to say this? And I said, fuck this. So when Stormy asked, I was like, how do you feel? I'm like, how do I feel? How do I actually feel? My actual feelings right now is exactly what I think the gay community does. And exactly what I think the gay community does where someone like me who doesn't necessarily have a six pack and doesn't look exactly like that will always finish last. And it's something that I don't agree with and I think is totally wrong. So I'm going to speak up over this because you bring in the next pretty thing who has a six pack abs, who's that version of me. And of course, right away, I wasn't going home. Like that's, I I don't think that's right. And I think that's something that needs to be talked about. And, you know, there's like some scenes and talk conversations that were missed. And that's something that Nick and I talked about as well. And he agrees with and stuff. And again, like own up to being in West Hollywood and in that type of environment. So I was Mm -hmm. like, no, we're going to say this. I've got a platform right now that has a bunch of other homos like me watching this show. So I'm going to say this and put that out there because this is the real feeling. And this is what actually happened. And people's feelings can get really hurt. But guess what? You're not going to make it in the real world with that. It doesn't work that way. And I remember when this season came out, me and Amari were talking. We're like, we love the the body diversity of the cast. That was something that we really like attached to. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad that you definitely brought attention. We're like, we got to talk about this. Yeah, it needs to be talked about. It's something that's important. And I think that like I will always like you say, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I'm always going to be that person. I'm always going to say something. Why do you think I got casted on reality TV? It's because mm-hmm. of that. Because I will always say how it is. You get someone talking shit about me, I will be right there going, be like, what did you say? Tell it to my face. Because if you can't <laughs> say it to my face, don't put my name in your mouth. Amen. Well, I think Maybe. I can say you will definitely be uh, my phoenix of the season. Where oh, I will great. be where I will be talking <laughs> about you for the entire mm-hmm. season. That's the goal. So yeah. that's why I said I was like, honey, you know what? I did reality TV, right? And it's not going to be the last time you'll see me on a screen. That's guaranteed. So, Amen. I know there were definitely <laughs> in future episodes. I'll be like, God, I wish Aaron was here. You know, yeah, I oh, know. Trust I, me. I, when I got out of that house, I was like, this shit's going to be so boring without me so have fun <laughs> i'm like who is going to challenge everybody i know who is no one else is. i was like they must be having such a boring time in there now mm-hmm. and i was thankful i had to leave i wanted to sleep in a real bed <laughs> <laughs> well aaron thank you so much for joining us at baby daddies thank you this has been a wonderful time it's been great to see you guys faces yeah. and i'm excited for the rest of your comments the rest of the season i'm excited to talk about it you want to let everyone know where they can follow you if you have anything to promote. yeah you can well right now my current instagram has been disabled so i'm trying to get my actual instagram back and that's the i have a little sub account that i just started which is aaron i think aaron dot chaplain underscore but still trying to get my normal account back you can follow me there uh, and I'll keep you up to date on things. My life is pretty crazy and I've got some pretty exciting things coming in the next few months. So be sure to watch out. Exciting. <laughs> Amario, let the girls know what the booty origami does. Oh, well, girls, the booty do the origami. She do twists, turns, squeezes, loosens. She do it all. <laughs> and you can see it all at... <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> You can see it all at Booty Origami on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Jake. We love it. You can follow me at Poison Touch Pod or at Crow Gunk uh, if you want to see my advice podcast, Poison Touch Advice Hour, where I give you all the best and worst advice to deal with all of life's predicaments. Catching me in a couple weeks to talk about the uh, some Reddit stories. And as always, we'll be back with Baby Daddies next week to talk more about For the Love of Dolphs Season 2. Thanks for watching. Oh. Yeah.